Some of the most common questions I get about studying abroad in Korea are, were your classes in English or in Korean? Did you take classes for your major? Were there Korean students in your classes? Were your classes hard? It's Natalia, so I'm coming to you with another study abroad in Korea video as an exchange student, specifically as an exchange student. So I studied at Suncheonhyang University for a year, and Suncheonhyang is a university that's actually not in Seoul, it's in Asan, or if you want to be really, really specific, it's in Shincheong, or the last stop, or one of the last stops of line one. Yeah, the dark blue one. That was our line. I studied there in 2016. I don't know why I just started singing, I apologize. <laughs> so I studied there in 2016, so please take everything I say with a grain of salt as some things might have changed, especially given the world situation. Yeah, I still get a lot of questions about studying abroad, so I thought I might as well answer some of those questions here in a video. Um, some of the things that I mention are gonna be specific to Suncheonhyang, um, but some of them will apply to other universities, so just, uh, you know. Keep your ears open. Now let's jump back into talking about being an exchange student in Korea. So there are two points I would like to address as background information for taking classes at Suncheonhyang. So at Suncheonhyang, we were required to take 16 credit hours each semester. Yeah, both semesters in Korea, I ended up taking 18 credit hours, which was very scary, especially my first semester, not knowing what the classes were gonna be like. Also, our classes only met once a week. And I think this is specific to Suncheonhyang. We only met once a week per course and we would meet for three hours yeah like three hours at a time so if i had korean literature i would only go on tuesdays from like two to five it was uh very uh, interesting and i don't think the korean students classes worked like this like my korean roommate i think she had her classes multiple times a week not like once a week so i think this was just specific to our program but i wanted to mention it My first semester, I took Korean speaking and Korean writing, and you might be like, what? Well, at Suncheonhyang, and I, this might be the same at other universities, honestly, I don't know, but like the Korean classes were broken down into skills. So if you wanted to take Korean at Suncheonhyang, you had to take speaking and writing, and then if you wanted to take more classes, you could take the reading and the listening class. So. I did not do that because I wanted to take some of the other classes that were available. So I only took speaking and writing, um, which were both three credit hours. And then I took the internship class, which counted as six credit hours. And the internship class is required as the part of the program. You don't have to take it for credit, but you do have to go and sit in class every week. Um, because again, it's part of the internship program. So I took that and then I took Korean culture and society and introduction to Korean history. Honestly, those two classes, those two last classes were really, really um, interesting and really enlightening. We'll go with that, very enlightening. My second semester, I took Korean speaking and Korean writing again. And then I took the internship class again, because again, you have to take it. And then I took international relations in East Asia and I took Korean literature. So were my classes in English or were they in Korean? Well, my friend, the answer to that question is both. They were in both. So this was actually uh, surprising to me because my American university had told me that all my classes would be in English and then I got there and they weren't all in English. Before you get scared, only the Korean language classes were taught in Korean. Uh, the rest of my classes were in full English, all English. Um, so for the Korean language classes, which now that I know more about Korea, I think this is really, this is probably standard at all Korean universities that the Korean language classes be taught in full Korean. And I was taking the topic three classes, actually both semesters, <laughs> um, but even the topic one or like the absolute beginner classes were taught in full Korean. So for the first few weeks, um, you will be very confused. You probably won't know what's going on and that's okay. That's what's supposed to be happening. It's like a <laughs> Now, if you wanted to take a class that was only offered in Korean, that wasn't Korean language, you needed to have a specific topic score or topic score, which is the Korean language, 
test of proficiency in Korean. You would think I would know the name after having taken the exam, but no. Um, so you would need to have a specific score. None of the students that were exchange students did that either of my semesters. So it's not very common. You would actually have to work it out with the school and potentially the department that that class is under, which I don't even know how you would know that that class is offered because they don't tell you about them. I do know that there was like a rumor of like some student that had done that before because they spoke really, really, really fluent Korean. I honestly wish this answer was different, but uh, no, not really, I didn't. And the reason for that is, if you didn't notice, <laughs> all the classes that are offered to exchange students at Suncheonhyang are related to Korea or Asia. Like everything was like an Asian studies course, which if you are an Asian studies major, like this is the program for you. You have quite a few options, but uh, I was a supply chain major, which means like, business and yeah none of the courses really helped go towards my degree i think i got six credit hours of like international elective courses which everyone at texas a m has to take like some kind of like international elective so i got six credit hours that whole year that actually went towards my degree <laughs> yeah now i do want to emphasize i think this is actually different from most of the universities in Seoul. So I had a few friends that actually studied at Korea University or KU and it looked like they were taking classes for their degree. I saw some accounting classes and I saw some classes that were not related to Asian studies. So definitely look at your specific program. But um, yeah, if you're going to Sun Young, you don't have a lot of options. So yeah, keep that in mind. Now let's talk about how challenging these classes were as well as the grading system because it was different from what I was anticipating. Maybe I was a little naive to not think it would be different, but it, yeah, anyway. So I would say the hardest classes that I was taking at Sun Chen Hyung were the Korean language classes. So again, I was taking two. I was taking the Korean speaking class and the a Korean writing class, which were both topic three and they were taught by different professors despite the fact that they were the same level yeah, I didn't like that very much, but um, they were extremely fast paced. We were learning so much content within the six hours that we were in class every week. Um, there was a lot of work that needed to be done outside the classroom. So just like homework in general, preparing for quizzes, preparing for tests, midterms and finals. Um, it was honestly so stressful that I did not enjoy learning Korean while I was at Sun Shenhyang. I think my favorite class was the Korean speaking class, like the first time I took it, just because the professor was so fun. But after that, yeah, it's, it was, I did not look forward to going to my Korean classes, even though I was wanting to learn Korean, if that makes sense. They were just so stressful, so darn stressful. Other than those, <laughs> other than those, which honestly, I think all Korean classes at Korean universities are that stressful and that fast paced, um, yeah. All the other classes were honestly a piece of cake. And I know this is subjective according to like what your home university is like, but at Texas A&M, I'm always stressed. But at uh, Sun Jin Young, I was rarely stressed about the classes that I was taking other than the Korean ones. Um, and that's because the classes seem to be extremely watered down. And I think Sun Jin Young does this just because they have the expectation that exchange students want to be out exploring Korea, not in the dorm room studying for just, like their classes. Um, so if that is the case, thank you, Sun Jin Young. I did appreciate the extra time to go traveling. We didn't really have that much homework in the other classes. We had midterms and finals for all of them, which were all written exams like you had to write an essay or answer free response questions and i think i had two or three classes where i had to do like a powerpoint presentation or do a group project but honestly overall there was not that much work to be done for those classes and i'd like to mention i think this is rather different from other universities my friends that went to ku looked like they were always studying and always had a lot of work to do so yeah, please like watch videos about your specific program if there are videos for that program. Now let's talk about grading and feedback because these two things were very different from what I was anticipating they would be. Maybe I was a little naive 
because I'd only, you know, been to school in the United States and I didn't bother to think about other grading systems, but uh, yes. So at Sunchon Hyung, the <laughs> we were all graded on a bell curve and this bell curve made it very difficult to get an A. Only 10% of the students were allowed to get an A and that means even if more than 10% of the students did A level work, only 10% would get an A. Yeah, so a lot of the classes at Sun Chin Hyung are about like 10 to 15 people because the exchange program wasn't that big, at least at the time. We had maybe 50 exchange students in our program, which meant there were a lot of classes that I was in that had maybe 10 or 11 students, meaning only, what, three? Three-ish? Three-ish. Three people would get an A in the whole class, so it kind of like, at least for me, that I really care about my grades. So I had this competitive mindset with my classmates that were my friends, if that makes sense. I was like, oh, only three of us can get an A. I want to be one of those three people. Now let's talk about the feedback situation because honestly, I found this more upsetting than the grading or more stressful rather. Yeah, more stressful. Out of the classes that were taught by Korean professors, which was all of them, with the exception of the internship class. I only got feedback in the Korean classes. And when I say I got feedback in them, I mean like every once in a while, I'd get like a paperback with a grade on it, or I'd get a quiz back with a grade on it, but not all the time. It was not guaranteed. It was like only if my professor felt like it. And in the other classes, I got zero feedback, ever. I didn't know how I was doing in the classes until the class was over. Yeah, one time I asked my Korean history professor, who I would like to mention as context, was absolutely like fluent in English. So this was not a language barrier. This was like a, just a cultural school system thing. I asked her if she could tell me how I had performed on the midterm because I was very nervous about how I performed on the midterm. And well, there was only two grades left in the semester. It was a project and the final. And so I wanted to know if I was like, if I should be concerned basically. And she looked at me and she looked very confused, like sincerely, genuinely confused. And she said, uh, I can't tell you how you did on the midterm because you haven't taken the final yet. And I was like, what? Okay, let me try this again. And so I tried to clarify and say, oh no, no, I don't wanna know how I did and how I'm doing in the whole course. I just wanna know how I did on the midterm. And she looked at me and she was still very confused, like not even like an annoyed confused, just like a, what are you, what? Uh, I can't tell you how you're doing cause you haven't taken the final yet. And I don't know if this was, if this is maybe like because of the bell curve, if she was like, no, like you, what like not enough information yet i i honestly i don't understand i don't get it but yeah if you're gonna go to sunshine young and i think this is a thing at other universities too please tell me your experience but um no feedback you just have to get used to not knowing how you're doing in the class until the class is over <laughs> pretty much and i remember in our cultural internship class the one that was taught by the canadian professor that was actually one of the things he uh, kind of like warned us about, I guess, or made us aware of so we wouldn't be as shocked later. So were there Korean students in my classes or in exchange student classes? The answer to that question is yes, but mostly no. So out of my whole year, so remember I was taking 18 credit hours both semesters, out of all those classes, there was only three, I think, three Korean students that were ever in my classes, like in one class. Like not they were in all of the classes, they were only in one. So while the Korean students could register to be in the same classes that the exchange students were in, they didn't really do that. If you saw like my roommates like schedules, you would understand why they were not interested in taking like these like elective like classes that us exchange students were in. They were very, very busy, like crazy busy. They didn't have time to be lollygagging with us. <laughs> a while back, I asked you guys to submit questions that you had about studying abroad in Korea to me on Instagram. So I've picked a few here that are related to what we're talking about today that I haven't already answered. So the first question was, did your grades count or was it just a pass fail system? So I think here you're asking about what like how the grades or the classes transferred back to my American university. So I attended Texas A&M and 
Texas A&M was confusing because before I went to Korea, they told me that I was gonna get the numerical grade and it was gonna be used to calculate my American GPA. However, upon returning from Korea with my Korean transcript that had like a numerical grade, like a out of 4.0 uh, on it, they decided to just do pass fail. I don't, I honestly, to this day, I still don't know why they did that because all the information on the study abroad website for Texas A&M said I was supposed to get the GPA. But yeah, I think that really depends on your home university. So if you are from France, check your uh, French university, which I say that because I know the person that asked this is French and you already graduated. So I'm not sure why you asked, but um, yeah. So I think it really depends on what your like home university says about how your like credits will be transferred. The next question was, how was studying in Korea compared to your home university? So in summary, like I was saying, the workload was rather light with the exception of the Korean classes. We got little to no feedback. The grading system made us stressed. However, despite all these things, I would say that it was actually way less stressful than studying at Texas A&M or my American university. And granted, I was an exchange student I was taking classes that were not for my major. I think if I had been taking like actual classes for my major at Sun Chun Hyung, like in Korean or something, or even if they were offered in English, like supply chain classes in English, I think they would have been much more difficult, difficult and more comparable to the classes I was taking in America. But uh, in the overall experience, cause I think this could also just be asking like studying abroad in general. I very, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot. I ended up staying two semesters instead of one semester. And I made a lot of friends, like friends that I'm still friends with to this day, even though it's been like five and a half years or so, something like that. Six, six, no. <gasps> Five and a half, it's been five and a half years and we are still just as tight as we were uh, when I was in Korea for most of the friends, maybe like 70% of the friends. You know, 30% did drop off the face of the earth, but you know what, most of them still friends. The last question I have here is, how did you register for classes? Hmm, <laughs> so I have something to uh, confess right here. Nobody asked this question, but I feel like I should mention it. Um, so for Sun Chen Yang, we didn't do any of that complicated like online registering stuff. If you, <laughs> if you have watched like Korea vloggers, and I mean Korea as in like Korean vloggers that are in university register for classes. It looks so stressful. Classes are gone like this. However, as Sun Chen Yang, you register using a piece of paper during orientation. There is no competition about, there's no question that you won't get the classes that you want unless there's not enough people. Like you are gonna get to take the classes that you wanna take. If you have any questions about the application process, getting a visa, what budgeting should look like in Korea, or just general questions about the internship program at Sun Yang University. I talked about all these things in the first episode of this series, so I will link the playlist for you down here. I will also be releasing some interviews that I did with students that also studied at Sun Yang University, so keep an eye out for those, and uh, I will see you guys in the next video. Tama bye, guys. Bye.